when I think about this drama, I can't stop laughing. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where Jung Kyung with storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. And as you have probably noticed, this really is a drama that I have caught my attention. But before I go into talk about this drama, I actually have something else irrelevant to talk about. I think it's an interesting and good thing to let people know, and maybe it will benefit you. So basically, I got reached out by uh, Asia Society in the US, and they are hosting their annual Why Speak Chinese contest, and they asked me to if I'm interested in promoting that, I thought, eh, it's a cool thing. It launches on April the 8th. As long as you're over 13 years old and you're a non-native Chinese speaker, you can enter this contest. What you do is you make a video, a short video, one minute, and then you put it on social media, Instagram or Twitter, or on their official Facebook page, which I'll link below. And also you submit this uh, official entry to the contest form on their website. The winner will get two round trip tickets to China. What you need to do in the video is talk about your memorable moments of speaking or learning Chinese. It can be anything, it can be funny, it can be like what they say cringeworthy. Uh, however you want to do it, creatively, it's up to you. Uh, you need to speak something in Chinese in the video and that's really um, all <laughs> the requirement. They will pick five winners from different regions, North America, South America, Africa, uh, Asia, and Europe. There's no Australia, that's weird. I just thought about that. So maybe just ask them if you're curious on their Instagram, on their Facebook, uh, all the links in the description about what if you are from Australia or New Zealand. So if you are outside China and you win, um, then you can get two round trip free tickets to China. If you're in China already, so just um, you're studying there already or you're working there, then you can get two tickets for your friends and family to visit and it starts on April the 8th. So yeah, definitely check out uh, this competition and it would be cool if somebody heard the news from my channel and actually won in the end. That would be really cool. Okay, now let's get into the actual video part about talking about Destiny's love. If you're on Discord, you probably already heard me <laughs> ranting about this drama. I got into this drama completely by accident because occasionally I'll scour Chinese web drama streaming sites and trying to find if there's something interesting that I haven't seen yet. So I just go into, you know, the new titles and randomly click stuff. And I look at this title, I thought, hey, is this one like a Chinese version of My Love From The Star? Because the name suggests so. And the Chinese name is like falling in love with a boyfriend who comes from Polaris, like the star, you know, like in the northern sky. So I was like, yeah, let's click into that one. What do you know, hey? Uh, I got out, like, watching the whole thing uh, up to the point that they have aired now, which is 24 episodes, so the entire thing is 36. And it is, as I expected, very close to what you have seen in the South Korean 2013 super popular drama, I Love From The Star. But then, in a way, it's actually completely different. And this drama, I would consider it to be because right now it's only like, you know, first quarter of 2019, so we don't know what's gonna happen for the rest of the year. But so far, this is the closest thing I feel like um, I can compare it to is the guilty pleasure <laughs> that I had with uh, 2017's Shuang Shi Chongfei, Eternal Love. I, I get a similar reaction to it. Is I didn't expect it to be anything, and I don't think it's a great production in any way, but I had so much fun, and I will definitely watch it till the end type of drama. This drama is led by Zhang Mingen, Xu Lu, Ren Yankai, and Wu Xin. And as the title suggests, it is about an alien man who falls in love with a earth woman. It's like almost the same setup as what you had in My Love From The Star, the South Korean drama in 2013. So the easiest way um, I can introduce this to you is compare those two dramas and you will immediately get a feel of what they are like and decide if you want to dive into it. Because I think most people who watch Asian dramas definitely have watched My Love From The Star. It was so big. It was like iconically big across the entire world. Like I think YSL's lipstick like went out of stock because of 
because of the drama. This version, a lot of people call it a Chinese version. I think it's fair to say that because of the character setup and because of certain certain plot points that are very similar uh, throughout the thing. But then I would call it really different too. To compare those two dramas, I would say if you're looking at acting or production quality or script quality, everything, pacing, everything, the South Korean drama is a much better one. It really is high quality, even when I watch it back today. It still is better than a lot of other dramas that came out recently across the board in Asia. I would also say the South Korean um, drama, uh, My Love from the Star, is essentially a serious romantic drama. Although it has so many comic relief moments, the undertone of it is really serious. Whereas the Chinese one, this one, Destiny's Love, it has an overall tone of being much lighter. If you're watching this drama for a couple of episodes, I think you can definitely get that the crew, the creative team, and the whole storyteller behind the camera are not taking itself extremely seriously. So it's not looking at itself as a sort of epically romantic, sort of like that sweeping drama. It really knows where it is, which is a web drama that definitely is not going to be like pan epidemically popular. It understands it's not a high budget um, drama. It doesn't have a stellar cast in terms of everybody, the lead roles, the lead actors all being extremely capable and not like they're not good but it understands like where it stands in the whole industry so it's not trying to be something it is not just because of that i think it, it gives you the same vibe similar to what eternal love is doing is i'm not high budget i definitely am not the best thing out there but i'm gonna have fun with myself and not taking myself seriously and just enjoy the storytelling this is the drama that you can go into watching Forgetting about seriousness or logic even, or you know, like just don't judge it. <laughs> like if this is a good piece of work, then you will have so much fun because <laughs> this drama is just so funny. It has so many what we call the, the current popular Chinese internet term sha diao. I think I've explained it previously. It's just so goofy in so many places. And it has like weird twists that you don't expect. And when it hits you, it's like, what the? How could they even think about doing that? And then it's ridiculous. And it's so much fun. I really enjoyed the main couple uh, played by Zhang Ming'en and Xu Lu. Zhang Ming'en, I think I was first introduced to him in Tianjin Mystic, playing Ding Mao, this sort of uh, the two male leads, one of them. But when I was watching Tianjin Mystic, I really just didn't pay much attention to him because most of my attention goes to Li Xian's Guo Deyou. I think. Um, he did a much better job at playing that role. I think in that drama, Zhao Ming is not relaxed enough. He really is acting, acting. Like you can feel like almost every scene he's in, he's he's acting his role. Like he's very self-conscious about him being an actor, playing a character. Whereas in a Destiny's Love, this one, you can sense a huge change in the way that he plays his role. Is he has started to understand like being sometimes is actually a better way than acting. He's much more relaxed in his role and therefore he actually comes across much more convincing as the role. I think he has improved a lot, <laughs> his acting since Tianjin Mystic. And then Xu Lu uh, also did a really good job. Uh, I have always liked her. I wouldn't say she's the best actress out there, but I don't think she deserves a lot of weird rumors people have about her in China. I don't understand where they come from. I think she's a pretty decent actress. She's very beautiful. And because I guess she was in Hong Kong too, playing a tiny role uh, many years ago, and I happened to be there too. And I actually remember her very clearly when she came to uh, the styling of her role. And when, when we took the, the photo shots of her hairstyle and clothing and I remember everybody in the, in the office, including producer and director, saying she's so cute on camera, she's so cute on camera I remember everybody saying that, she was like what, 14 years old back then so it's a strong impression, she is really pretty and she's very recognizable so that's a good thing for an actress I think she played her role in this drama very well like, Definitely not dropping the ball, but it's fair to say because both the lead uh, actor and the lead actress are younger uh, in actual age 
than you if you compare to the South Korean version. And there are less experienced actors and actresses for sure. And also the script writing quality of the South Korean version is much better than this one in terms of structuring and playing the dynamics and not really loosening the pace at all throughout the whole thing. The Chinese version still tends to be more all over the place. And also the Korean, the male lead, female lead, the male second, female second, the four of them, right, in My Love From The Stars, each of them individually are superstars in Korean drama land. Like they can each lead a drama with no problem, just themselves, like as singly, they can do that. So they're acting that sort of ensemble is so strong that this Chinese version with a uh, younger, not necessarily younger, I, I think for all the actors, but then less polished actors and also such as like the second female lead Wu Xing, she's like, she's not really an actress, right? She's a, she's a TV host. So that acting ability uh, is not definitely not comparable to the South Korean one, but the Chinese one has its own merit. It's so lighthearted and it's so fun. While you're watching it, occasionally you will be reminded of the South Korean drama, but not to an extreme extent. And you will actually enjoy it as itself. There are so many moments that I just laughed unstoppably. So I highly recommend if you want to relax <laughs> after a day's work and if you want to have fun, please keep this one on your list. It is currently on Vicky, um, but it's been subtitled very, very slowly because I don't think it's a super popular one yet. So, you know, like people are not working their butts off to put stuff out. It has aired already 24 episodes in China. Uh, if you're not a VIP, it's up to 18, but then on Vicky, it's only like, what, six or something. So there's still a bit of time for it to catch up. Maybe wait for a while until there's more subtitle going on um, and then head into it. And don't expect great things, you know, like masterpieces, no. But you will have fun, trust me. And the first episode, I will highly recommend you stick through the first episode because the first couple of scenes, right, are just like, is this a crappy drama? Because it has a strong vibe of being a, like a really cheap, crappy drama. Stick till the end of episode one because right at the end of episode one, there will, there will be a twist that you probably didn't expect. And once you get there, you're like, Oh my god, I didn't expect that. <laughs> this is like interesting. I want to keep on watching. You'll get to that point. And then by the end of episode 22, which is not on Vicky yet, so you need to wait. But the end of episode 22 is literally the most funny scene I've seen in any dramas for a long time. I can't even remember what's the last time that I laughed this much and this Desperately, I, I literally was like hyperventilating. Like if I loved any more, I would need to ask for medical assistance. Yeah, so if you want a good laugh, okay, warned you, don't jump ahead. But then episode 22 is definitely open up a new world of being ridiculously fun on, on camera. Uh, laughing your pants off is not impossible. So that's, that's what I want to say about this. I, I've definitely watched past two thirds. So it wouldn't really be a first impression, but then because I binge watched it literally within two days. So it's still first impression because it literally only existed in my world for two days, three days. Thank you for watching Up New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching and check out that contest because tickets are really cool to have for free.